When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the evidences there were for the increase in concentration of sulfur dioxide and the oxides of nitrogen. What we're going to do in this video is explain the formation of the, and the effects of acid rain. So the dot point says explain formation of the formation and the effects of acid rain. So we have to go for how they get formed, how acid rain gets formed, and what effect it has as well. And before we start, this is just a quick diagram. So I mean, this is actually just you can imagine industry here pumps up some of this actual gas, sulfur dioxide and the oxides, into the atmosphere. Then it goes into the rain cloud. There, it comes in contact with actual water and becomes acid rain. And then the acid rain itself drops down and causes problems. Obviously, some of the problems are stuff like this, which is killing trees. We'll go over all of that. But I wanted to go for this quickly, just a brief summary, because it says the oxides of nitrogen. Remember, we've got NO2, nitrogen dioxide, and NO, nitrogen monoxide. And this one here is neutral, which means it does not cause acid rain. It does cause problems. I mean, it's not neutral in terms of health effect, but it does not cause acid rain. So no acid rain from this. The only one of those two that does cause acid rain is nitrogen dioxide. So when we're talking today, we're going to talk about the formation of acid rain from nitrogen dioxide and from sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. These are the ones we're going to discuss today. So we're, first, we're going to explain the formation, and then we're going to go for the effects of acid rain. But because it says explain, you need to not, not just be able to say how it happens, but you have to give a detailed kind of explanation, plus some equations would be useful as well. So for the first thing I'll go through is how sulfur dioxide causes the formation of acid rain. So it causes acid rain. And this is the green, these two green numbers is exactly that. So first, we've got sulfur dioxide here, which could have come from industry, right? So industry, maybe iron smelting or copper smelting or the burning of coal. This would have released sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. And then at the clouds, we've come in contact with water. So this is at our clouds or in our atmosphere. And once these two come together, they have a reaction that occurs. And we have this being produced, which is sulfurous acids. Sulfurous acid. Now this is a relatively weak acid. And it wouldn't cause too many problems. But the thing is, once this has actually formed, it can come in contact with oxygen which is the second step. So first step is just producing the sulfurous acid when it, the sulfur dioxide comes in contact with water in our clouds. And the next step is our sulfur dioxide, uh, our sulfurous acid, which is this one here, our sulfurous, which we formed in the first step, comes in contact with oxygen, which is just in our atmosphere. And we have oxygen, oxygen being attached to the actual chemical formula, chemical structure. And now we have something called sulfuric acid being formed. Sulfuric Acid. So you can see the main difference is it incorporated one of those extra oxygens in its actual chain. But this now causes ma massive problems because this here is actually a quite a strong acid. So now we have a strong acid that was formed. And this is how we form an acid from a sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is released from the industry. It, it comes in contact with, high, with water in the clouds. That forms sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid, which is a weak acid, but then it comes in contact with oxygen, which is also in the air, and that produces a strong acid, sulfuric acid. Now, if we have sulfur trioxide, so this is here sulfur trioxide, not sulfur dioxide, SO3, and this can also be produced from natural events when if once SO2 is in the atmosphere, and when that comes in contact with water, it directly forms sulfuric acid. So this is here again sulfuric acid, the strong acid, and that happens directly when it comes in contact with water. It doesn't have to go through step one. It goes directly to the step. And this was for our oxides of sulfur. So of sulfur dioxide and trioxide. Now when it comes to nitri nitric acid and nitrous acid, that's when we have the oxides of nitrogen. But remember the only oxide of nitrogen that does this is NO2, not NO. So Nitrogen monoxide does not create acid rain, only NO2. So here we can see this would have been released from cars mostly, cars or transport vehicles. This is in the air, so we've got nitrogen dioxide in the air. It comes in contact with 
water and get in you know, other clouds is combined in a chemical reaction to form both nitrous and nitric acid. So this here, HNO2, is nitrous, nitrous acid. Sorry about my accent. Um, and the HNO3 is nitric acid. Same with beforehand, the nitrous acid is weak compared to the nitric acid. Nitric acid is strong acid. And this is the one that causes problems. But now we have both of them being created. So this one will cause problems, but this one won't cause problems yet. But same with beforehand, once we have a bit of that in the atmosphere, so our nitrous acid, our weak acid, can still come in contact with oxygen here, so plus oxygen, and create also the strong acid. So this is again our nitric acid. So either it can be directly formed or indirectly through the addition of water to that weak acid. And this was the formation of acid rain. So it's due to you know, the actual bad stuff. So the, the, uh, the bad gases go in the atmosphere for industry or for cars. Then they come in contact with clouds. Clouds causes it to become acid. And then it drops down onto our actual surface and causes problems. But you should know, because it says explain, you should remember these equations. And even though it seemed quite daunting, they're, like if you think about it for a bit, they're not too hard to remember. So remember the equations and remember the processes, you know, the, the actual steps. So it's released, then comes in contact with clouds, then forms acid rain, and then comes back down again, and then it causes problems. That's for this. So you should remember them for both nitrous dioxide, trioxide, and nitrous, di ni nitrous dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, and nitrous dioxide. Remember all of these three ways. Next part, which is to explain the effects of acid rain. So first we explain the formation. Now these are the effects of what acid rain actually does. So for example, acid attacks marble. And what I mean by marble is, you know, all your build all buildings are really ancient buildings. They've got lots of marble in it. And the problem with that is because marble actually reacts with sulfurous, sulfuric, and nitric acid, especially nitric and, and sulfuric, the strong ones. And then they cause it to change. So here we have calcium carbonate, so Ca calcium, SO3 calcium carbonate. So this is calcium carbonate. And here it comes in contact with our strong acid, our sulfuric acid. This is a sulfuric acid. And what happens then is we have water and carbon dioxide being created. So this is being created. But the problem is we have our Calcium carbonate, which is a marble, changed calcium sulfate. And this is still solid, so both of them are solid. Our marble is solid and calcium sulfate is solid. But these strange dots here, these brownish dots, that's our calcium sulfate. So you can see it's not the same marble anymore, which means it just damages buildings. So the ancient buildings that are made up much of it is made up of marble. For example, you know, your Roman buildings, these are all affected by acid rain. Another problem is that acid detects metal. So it's tax metal. What I mean, and so another word for that is corrodes, it corrodes metal. So for example, if you have iron here, iron, which is a solid, if it comes in contact again with sulfuric or nitric, but in this case it's sulfuric, sulfuric acid, then what happens is the iron itself goes into iron sulfate. So this is iron sulfate and hydrogen gas. But the problem is iron itself is quite tough and quite strong, but iron sulfate is really brittle, like rust. So what you can see here, this here, is the corrosion, which means iron, which is supposed to hold things up, becomes weak and brittle. So for example, buildings and bridges, which are made up of metal, especially iron, are affected. And that's quite a few buildings. So obviously acid rain is not good for our general infrastructure. So we have two so far, acid attacks metal and acid attacks marble. Another one is that acid changes the pH of lakes and all living organisms have a ideal pH. So for example, most of our enzymes in our body want to have a pH of about seven. So if we change that pH, that means we won't be able to survive as well. So all the ocean organisms that have that are affected by this acid rain, especially lakes. So I'm, I mean, I wrote ocean, but probably lakes is more appropriate. Small body of water. Those organisms will lower the actual pH, have a lower pH now to deal with, which means they have a less ideal pH and often they don't survive, they actually die from that. So acid changes the pH of water in lakes. And that's a problem for the organism living inside, organisms are living things, so all living things are inside are affected. Also it affects the pH of soil because the acid changes the pH of soil, makes it lower. And remember from the couple of indicators chapter back, 
we actually have soil which is affected, which has the ideal, so plants have their ideal pH range for the soil that has to be, for it to grow properly. So for example, some apple trees might have, want to have a pH of 6, and if that acid rain lowers that pH, that might mean that apple trees can't grow anymore. So it affects the plant of growth, growth of plants. And last, so this is the fourth one, and then last but not least, we've got acid rain attacks the cuticle of leaves. The cuticle are parts of yeah, the leaves themselves. And what that means is that the actual trees, so here we've got a picture, trees lose the leaves. And once the trees lose the leaves, obviously the trees or the plants are affected, but also all organisms that feed off. So all living things that feed off the actual plants are also affected. So acid rain has a big impact on the environment, especially plants and things that feed off plants, which are a lot of organisms. So here are the five main effects of acid rain. And because the dot points has explain, you should not just listen, don't just say them, but be able to say why as well. So for example, acids attack marble. Why does it attack marble? Well, how does it happen? And then you would really give that equation and say that, you know, calcium carbonate, which is marble, changed into calcium sulfate, which is now different. Or if you say, you know, acid attacks metal, give that kind of equation and say that the, the actual iron becomes iron sulfate, which makes it brittle. So don't just purely name it, but also be able to explain it. But these were the ones. So acid attacks marble, acid attacks metal, acid changes the pH of water in lakes, acid changes the pH of soil, and the acid attacks the cuticle leaves. And then the white things I wrote under it were the explanation of what actually that causes in terms of problems. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.